creative living. Utilizing today's technology with the best of the past to bring you innovative ideas and up-to-date information for creative lifestyles in today's active world. With your host, Cheryl Borden. Thanks for joining me today for Creative Living. We're going to learn how to make ottomans and tuffets, talk about the organic skincare movement, and discuss growing pumpkins and gourds. One of my guests is Rebecca Peck, and she represents the Upholstery Studio. Rebecca is going to demonstrate making easy ottomans and tuffets. She's from Phoenixville, Pennsylvania. Another guest is Vincine Perinello, and she's the founder and CEO of Why Hope Organic Skincare in San Diego, California. Vinny's going to talk about why more women and men are turning to organic skin care products, which may be a safer route in terms of caring for the skin. And we'll begin the show with Kurt Jaynes, who will explain how to grow pumpkins and gourds, and he'll share some usage tips as well as tell how to identify the various products. Kurt's business is Garden Source Nursery and Landscaping in Portales, New Mexico. Kurt, it's really nice to have you here. And every year when it gets holiday or fall time, I just love to decorate the, the front porch with uh, oh, the little gourds and some pumpkins and things, but I've never grown them myself. So you're gonna tell us how easy they are to grow, aren't you? Yes, we are, Cheryl. Uh, they are actually uh, easy to grow and uh, anybody can do it if they just have enough space. Oh, a lot of space, that's <laughs> right. Well, since I don't know the difference in most of these, let's start with this one, which looks like your well, I guess this one looks like the, the jack-o'-lantern, but this one would make a great uh, jack-o'-lantern. Yes, it would. That, uh, Cheryl, that one is called the um, Cinderella pumpkin. Oh, And if okay. you look at it, it kind of uh -huh. looks like Cinderella's cage, carriage. Carriage. Uh -huh. Yes, and it's also known as a stacking pumpkin because you see how flat it is? Mm -hmm. You can stack those probably two or three high to make your display on your front porch or, you know, for mm -hmm. an autumn display of any sort. Yeah, it is flat. And uh, that one will not make as good a carving pumpkin as your standard variety, so it's more for display. Display, okay. Now, this one is kind of warty looking. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, and looking. that's a perfect uh, way to describe it because it's a red warty. W-H-O- R-T-Y is the Morty. name of that pumpkin. And uh, that one would be easy to carve. Mm -hmm. Okay. It has all the different lines and textures mm -hmm. on it. It makes it really interesting. Very interesting. You could probably take and stack it on top of one of the Cinderella's oh, you if you uh -huh. really wanted to. And then go uh -huh. yes. different sizes. Now this looks like the jack-o'-lantern one, doesn't the, it? It is. That's the standard uh, variety that you can find at any store or, uh -huh. or farmer's market that you go out and look uh, for. And that one is known as the Howden, H-O-W-D-E-N. Oh. That's your standard jack-o'-lantern. Obviously uh -huh. we know they're easy to um, mm -hmm. Uh, to carve, carve. Uh -huh. and also to make pies and such oh, like yeah. that. Oh uh yeah, -huh. and the seeds and things that are in them, that, that's fun to can use put pretty those much in every the bit oven. of it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now the white one is, is my favorite, it's just beautiful. Well it, it is, and it's different and unique, just like uh -huh. some of the other ones that you can find out there also. And that one is known as the white ghost. Uh -huh. And uh, I'll tell you, if you went to carve that, you would almost need an ax to get into it because oh. it has very hard flesh on it, so it's not a carving pumpkin. However, it make excellent pies. Now, I'll tell you, it has a yellow flesh inside, whereas oh, these others does. have orange. Uh huh. So it, it is still the, the flesh and seeds would be edible. Correct. It's just it's a very thick um, skin. Skinned. Mm -hmm. Very thick skin. Oh, so okay. I don't think I'd uh, let any of the kids try to try carve, carve that one. No, just stick with the standard tough. varieties. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know if those are just called ornamental gourds or is that? I have looked high and low to try to find the names of each of these. And then when you go to buy these at a market, uh, you'll notice that there's so many different varieties. Mm -hmm. These are just known as ornamental gourds. Okay. So you just, in, in most cases, just pick out your favorites whenever you are. So are gourds just going. baby pumpkins or is it a totally different type? They're, they're of the same family. And okay. uh, they're just a different type, yes. Okay. They'll have the okay. seeds in them just like uh -huh. this. Obviously, the seeds will be small. A and you can eat the, the flesh inside? Yes, or? you can, and most of them. Okay. Most cases, Good. yes. Because well, they're related like to the butternut squash and your acorn mm -hmm. squash and those type of things. Well, we were talking earlier about how hard it is to grow. You've got a great story about how most of these were grown. Well, these three right here, Cheryl, I uh, actually had bought them at a, uh, a market last year. And after the season, I put them in my... Uh, garden so I could compost them for mm -hmm. next year and lo and behold this spring they came up and I had <laughs> multiple vines and I just let them go not knowing what to expect and this is what I came uh -huh. up with. So that's there it you shows didn't you show any easy. tender loving care to them at all. <laughs> I didn't they just sat on top of the ground and, and uh, decomposed and <laughs> up came the seed. But um, the pumpkins are easy to grow you do need a lot of space, space. for them because mm -hmm. they are a vine. The the Actually, I'm going to tell you this because I went through this this year. They are susceptible to some diseases that can uh, limit the amount of uh, pumpkins that you, your vine will yield. Uh, one thing is the powdery mildew. 
pretty much every time you plant a pumpkin, you're going to have powdery mildew. Once you have it, it is hard to get rid of. So how you do that whenever you're so growing So you want it, to prevent it? You want to prevent it. dealing with it. Exactly, okay. that is correct. And uh, I, I use this product here called Natural Guard. It is a uh, says organic. It's a, oh, soap. Uh -huh, it's liquid, a liquid fungicide. Liquid uh -huh. uh, fungicide, and you can also get them that come with the insecticides also. So that way you can get okay. rid of bugs such as squash bugs, cucumber beetles, mm -hmm. things like that. will attack your lives. When do you put this out? You would need to do that about the 1st of June. And it depends on what uh, part of the country and what zone you're in, but around the 1st of June is when you should start being preventative. I see. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then always watch them for uh, bugs. Now, and do you want to kind of tilt them off the vine so you can see? Is that where the, the fungus or the the bugs would be? The uh, bugs will be on underneath the leaves. The oh, fungus the will leaves. be on the leaves. The powdery mildew, which is your most common uh, fungus that gets on the leaves, is a, it looks like you've dusted it with flour. Oh, okay. So you want to you prevent watch that because it mm -hmm. will wither the plant and it will die. Mm -hmm. And obviously they don't take a lot of rain, uh, water, because we haven't had much rain. <laughs> Well, I have a drip system in my garden, and that's actually a good point there because oh. on, to help minimize the uh, effects of powdery mildew and uh, viruses and things like that on your plants, it would be best if you could drip irrigate them or water them on the ground, not with a sprinkler not a spraying sprinkler. on top. Uh -huh. That's very important. A drip uh, will definitely help. Mm -hmm. Fertilizer is very important also because if you are trying to grow the biggest pumpkin on the block, you'll uh -huh. want to make sure that you are fertilizing them probably every two weeks to once a month at least for two weeks to once a month. That's quite a lot. It is. Uh, but, you know, a lot of times we grow these pumpkins just for the fact that when everything else is starting to wane in the fall, uh -huh. you have your pumpkins to display. Planting time is also important. You know, there's uh, many competitions where they grow the largest mm -hmm. pumpkins, and to get those up and growing, you would want to start those anywhere from April 25th to May 15th so that you could have them get that large for, and get for competition. get mature and, and be ready to, That's to correct. take off the And vine. those are called your giant pumpkins. And on, are pumpkins like cantaloupes in that on a vine you'll have four or five, like when you grow cantaloupes? That is correct. And you'll know you have a female flower with it. The, when the bloom opens underneath, it'll be a little, almost the size of a marble. Oh, okay. And then the male uh, bloom will not. So the bees then come in and pollinate them, and uh -huh. that's how they uh, will um, grow a pumpkin. Well, it's kind of nice to know how you grew yours because we that gives all of us hope. <laughs> That's correct. That's correct. <laughs> well, it's really interesting and, and they're more fun to decorate with than anything else and to sit out at Halloween and to right. let your kids help carve. But um, it, I really didn't realize it was so much to know about a pumpkin. Well, uh, there's a lot to know about them. And if you just stay on top of making sure that you don't get any diseases off the bat, I think you're going to have good luck. And plus, it's excellent uh, to grow those with your children. Oh, yeah. Grandchildren. Well, well, thank you very much, you're Kurt. You're very this welcome. Interesting. Vinny, thank you so much for being with us. Um, we're going to talk about skin care products, and uh, we know that beauty care is a big business. I, mm -hmm. I've always said I could open my drawers and cabinets, <laughs> and I could probably open my own skin care product mm -hmm. uh, business. But how did you get involved in this? Um, in a very strange way. I actually was a pediatric nurse in a doctor's office by trade, mm -hmm. but I actually started developing skin care when I was going through chemotherapy. Oh, and what made you, did it revive you? Did it just give you a purpose or why? Uh, you know, it's kind of weird. I've had pretty decent skin and I was 31 at the time. And there were changes that went on that I never experienced before. You know, I had dryness. I had dark spots that showed up, dark mm -hmm. circles. I was 31 but started looking more like I was in my late 50s. Uh -huh. So um, why my skincare lines that I had tried weren't working, I really didn't understand. Mm -hmm. Not until we started to explore why they didn't work. So it really wasn't so much me that had the problem as much as it was these formulas. Just they failed mm -hmm. me. When you get to a certain stage in life or with your health, uh -huh. they will fail you. That's so, interesting. Kind of weird. It's like we're set up. And it, it's like now we're going to organic food. We're going to more organic and green products. Right. And so the skincare business is headed this direction too. And right. that's what you've come up with. We know when I started, organic didn't exist in skincare really. Oh. I was like a pioneer and people are almost kind of shunned to the side because the FDA said, if you don't use these chemicals, we use an FDA licensed manufacturer. 
So they set and mandate these different categories and rules and regulations to the manufacturers. Mm -hmm. Well, if you're not going to use these preservatives in your product, we won't say that you're an FDA-approved facility. Oh. So that also makes it very difficult on getting your liability insurance, which is something people really need to be aware of when you're buying products like at a mm -hmm. farmer's market. Uh -huh. Most of those lines don't even know what liability insurance is. And that's scary to me because when you're using natural or organic ingredients, these are fruits and vegetables and seaweeds. Well, they love bugs. Oh, so if I'm uh -huh. making a skincare cream and I'm using things like milk and these natural ingredients, well, what's preserving them? I uh -huh. mean, that can go rancid on your skin. So oh. that's a concern too. And you found out that the, a lot of the mainstream skincare companies were using a lot of toxic products. Right. And the thing that intrigued me the most is when I put all these bottles on my kitchen table, it's, it's a long kind of a dining room table size, mm -hmm. and I looked at the ingredients on all these different bottles of skincare, and I went, the common denominator they shared was water. Right, and that's it, always the first thing that's listed. Always. I mean, mm -hmm. some skincare lines now put apple juice, oh. they'll put aloe vera, but predominantly it's water. water. And uh -huh. as a cosmetic chemist, that's how they start formulating is using water. Uh -huh. But see, I wasn't a cosmetic chemist. I was trying to make sense of whatever I put on my skin to do something to help my skin. So in my mind, I came up with this broth concept. And I took fruits and vegetables and things from my garden at the time and brewed it up and then used that broth to make my product. Oh. Well, that's what the patent's on. No one uh -huh. has ever done that. Right. And you said, of course, this is tap water. That's just regular and water. this is your spritz water. Right. And it's made from... These different seaweeds, uh -huh. fruits, and vegetables. Wow. And teas, yeah. And, and teas, yeah. Uh -huh. So now when you spray this on your skin before you put any of the moisturizers on, you've already put a lot of not only hydration on your skin, uh -huh. but all these nutrients. Rejuvenating your skin. Yeah, uh -huh. exactly. Uh -huh. Well, and I think the skin care, or our skin, um, is, is a place where we sometimes try to skimp. Mm -hmm. We think, oh, well, one product's about as good as another. I'll just put some moisturizer on and then put our makeup, whatever. Yeah. So um, I guess reading labels is also important. Very important. The thing about your skin that people don't understand and they need to, it's the screen door to your immune system. Oh, It's that's... a part of your immune uh -huh. system. So if it's dry or it's oily and you have blemishes or you have really dry patches, mm -hmm. That's like a hole in a screen door. Uh -huh. The flies will come in. The flies in this case are harmful chemicals, radiation, things like that that UV your skin rays. is designed to mm -hmm. protect you from are now going to invade your, your space, your uh -huh. body. So I was very concerned that when I put skincare on our skin, on your face, but then too on your body, that it was good for you. It wasn't going to jeopardize us in any way. So when we buy organic, does that mean the ingredients are or are organic, or is it the formula that's organic? That's twofolded. And what's interesting is I went and shopped in a lot of natural food stores and bought what they said were natural skincare products or organic uh -huh. skincare products. And all of a sudden I see parabens listed, I see your polyethylene glycols listed, and I thought formaldehyde preservatives were listed. And I went, well, how natural wow. and organic uh -huh. is this? This is this is a joke, which then makes people say, ah, that organic stuff. It's no different. It's no different. I'm just going to keep mm -hmm. using whatever it is that I am using, whether uh -huh. it's bought in the drugstore, the department store, wherever you get it. Then you've destroyed their trust. Uh -huh. And that's what really annoys me is it's a big deal when someone trusts you mm -hmm. and they want to come over and try your product because they think it's really special. So when we advertise that and then we mislead them, we've also then canceled their ability to trust. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's dangerous. And is it true, as it is sometimes in food products, that organic is more expensive? Well, there's the other truth. Making skincare with water mm -hmm. and charging somebody $60 a bottle. <laughs> yeah. Making skincare that's a broth uh -huh. that's organically based for $60 a bottle. 60% of the formula is, is the water portion. Mm -hmm. So 60% is water. 50 wow. to 60%. The heavier the cream, the less the water. Oh. Uh -huh. The other thing that's interesting is when you use natural butters and not petroleum derivatives in your products, you don't have the ingredients fighting in the water. Oh. When I put natural essential oils and botanicals in water, the chemistry of the water fights with the botanicals. Mm -hmm. When I put it in a broth that's already of them, uh -huh. they see them as a family, 
so I so don't have to use as many. Goes, exactly. Uh -huh. I see. Right. Well, it's amazing how it makes sense when you think about it that way. <laughs> That's like. <laughs> That's right. I try telling everybody that all the time. You have a brain. Uh huh. You can use it. And, and another one of your missions is uh, with your company, Why well, Hope, mm -hmm. is to use ingredients that will not harm the environment. Right. And that's important too. Very important. I mean, when we take something from the earth, we don't we we don't want to deplete it. You know, everyone's gone on the bandwagon and gone into Brazil, and now they're raiding the rainforest for things to put in skincare to get rid of wrinkles and things like that. And it's okay to a point, but if you're going to damage all those resources, there's also a lot of great pharmaceutical research to go on there. Oh. I mean, I found a lot of these different fruits and extracts have precious minerals and nutrients in it that could actually fight against cancer. Mm -hmm. So what's more important, a wrinkle or fighting cancer? Well, it's certainly a different way to look at it. Well, yeah. I really have enjoyed talking to you about this. Thank, Thank you. you for bringing us up to date on what's even involved in skincare Welcome. products. Thank you. Rebecca, it's so nice to have you here, and I was so glad we were going to talk about not just Ottomans, but Tuffets, because I've always wondered, you know, little Miss Muffet and her Tuffet, mm -hmm. what's the difference? Well, generally, it's size. Oh, size. Tuffets are smaller. Ottomans can get pretty big. We've got a nice size one here, and we've got some really large ones as well. Okay, so um, primarily the size primarily then. Primarily uh -huh. size, yes. But, um, and, and I've done a little bit of upholstery work but I never know where to start on a new project. So you, with your kits, really make this easy for those of us who are novices. Yes, they're very easy. They all the kit, all of the- This is a tough it. Instructions uh -huh. come with the DVD. So you can actually see the experts doing it and follow along. Oh. And I love the choices that you have. Yes. Um, and it gives you lots of ideas. Of course, these are the, in individual parts, and we'll go through most of these things in just a little bit, but once you have that, my question would be, okay, I watched the DVD, and uh, I don't really have a good place to go buy fabric, but I have some on hand, but where do I find all of the other components? You can generally go to any of the fabric stores, but we also have available kits that have everything, have everything in them. That's what I them. really liked. And, yes. and, and uh, they come in a big box because you sent several to us here for, for today. Yes. And everything is included. Everything is in there. We've got the foam, the Dacron, all of the structural supports. We've even got the bendable plywood for the round ottomans. And this one, the one on, on my left, is for the ottoman round. Mm -hmm. And then the other, the small one, obviously, is for small. a tuffet. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly, right. Okay, and there's also a few other tools you would suggest that we have on hand, buy, borrow, rent, or something. Yes, exactly. If you're going to be doing an ottoman, they have webbing underneath. Uh -huh. So instead of a board under the foam, it's a nice soft, soft, a little softer, nicer to sit on. So we would recommend that you get a webbing stretcher. That's this. And these are all from Double Rock. And then we, if you wanted to do a tufted ottoman, like we've we're going got, to show. yes, uh -huh. we've got the um, drill head to cut the holes out for the tufting. Oh. And then we've also got two mm -hmm. tools which I think are really great. We've got the staple remover in case you make a mistake. Uh -huh. Which we do. Yeah, you know, okay. screwdriver and the pliers <laughs> okay. are, don't always work. So that is a great tool. And then we have the staple setter. So if you don't get it in quite all the way, just hit it with a hammer oh, and that, okay. that And you mentioned and it, the, the tufted in. buttons. This ottoman is a very large one, large, mm -hmm. round, it's beautiful. And the tufted buttons are really what's so beautiful about the top. Yes, exactly. And with all of the instructions, it's easy. It's a much easier than, than, it than looks. people, yes. Good, mm -hmm. okay. And then you have a very beautiful ottoman on your side, and yes. it's kind of unique in itself. Yeah, this is one of our storage ottomans. So oh, the top comes completely off. Got lots of space to put stuff in, and sits nicely on there. So you can make them as maybe frivolous, whimsy, whimsical, mm -hmm. or you can make them very elegant. It's your choice. Exactly. That's the beauty about making them, isn't it? That's right, because you know so many people want to customize everything in their house, so this is a great way. You can pick out your own fabric, the size that you want, whether or not you want storage, mm -hmm. and there are some other 
you know, when you get really when you creative, get better. <laughs> there are some more fun things you can do with okay. them. Okay, you're going to show us kind of how to build. A, we're going to make a small ottoman here, and this was that bendable yeah, uh, so plywood. Can, show yeah, me the, how that works. Oh, well, that's just so that gives oh, you the nice curve. Uh -huh. I see. On your ottoman. So when we're making round, that mm -hmm. and that comes in the kit. If that we choose comes the in round the kit. One. Yes. That's mm -hmm. interesting. Okay. So once you get all of your pieces together, this is what a tuffet's going to look like. Tuffet. Okay. And then all you're going to do is you're going to put your fabric on. And mm -hmm. if you're doing a stripe or something that you kind of want to make sure, like for this fabric, I would want to make sure mm -hmm. that. With the My pattern's so kind of uh -huh. even, yeah. And, and stripes, like, obviously, you mm -hmm. don't want them going crooked. Don't want them going crazy. And then you just flip it over. Uh -huh. We'd recommend a good staple gun. Uh -huh. And you just start, you kind of start in the middle on each side. Those initial yeah. Make sure places this is to hold it. Good and tight. Uh -huh. And then you're going to do... The other side. Oh, and I didn't center that enough. That's why we need the staple remover. That's why we, we can need do the that. staple remover. So we would staple on each end. Yeah, staple each side. Now, how long? You've done so many of mm -hmm. these, so I know you're a professional. But how long from start to finish? If a person made a small tuffet, how long would it take? Uh, simple, not maybe the tufted buttons. Um, I would say, if they're starting from the kit with uh -huh. everything already cut, right? Yeah, just a few hours. That's amazing. So. Okay, and then you said too. This is kind of unique too. To let me move this so we can see. We can put things like skirts. Oh, and this yeah. is the top you were talking yeah, about. Yeah, this, a this one I quilt. used a, a charm pack, which is a pack of pre-cut squares of fabric. That they're already all picked out for you. Pre-cut. Pre-cut. Oh, I love it. So just sew them all together in uh -huh. whatever pattern you want. And then you could put a little skirt on there if you wanted to get really. Wouldn't these be cute in the same room? Crazy. And oh, yeah. I love this. This looks like a little girl's room or a sunroom to mm -hmm. me. Yeah, it's bright and cheery. So there's a lot of things you can do once you get the hang of it. You can really get fancy. Get fancy. Okay. And this one we wanted to show kind of a surprise thing that you could do, especially if you're semi-artistic, but it has mm -hmm. a stencil. That, uh, and that's what you did this with. Yeah, I just used some fabric paint and a stencil brush, stencil, did my stenciling, uh -huh. and then I added some dimensional paint just for some little accents on here. Oh. And then I would maybe do something in the corners. Some more stenciling? Yeah, you really jazz uh -huh. it up. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, would you suggest, since people's feet go on these, that, that there's, are, the, are all the fabrics stain treated? You can stain resistant. If you're gonna pick out like some quilting fabric, I would maybe Scotch guard it Good once point. you were done. Upholstery uh -huh. fabric, you're probably pretty safe. But okay. With and some then, of the cottons, something like this, definitely some Scotch it would guard. Work. Yeah. Okay. You, we just couldn't show everything. We wished we could have them all up here. But talk about the different types of fabrics that you've chosen. Well, we've just got some some bright fun fabric on this one. We've got actually an embroidered piece oh, that's on that tuffet. Uh -huh something fun for the kids. Here we've actually got a knitted cover on one. Looks like a little sweater. Yeah, and this one just another bright cheery one. So mm -hmm. really, you can really let your imagination go. Think of some really mm -hmm. fun things to do with them. Like you said, if you're artistic, you could paint, paint, and paint it all. you could do freehand painting if you Yeah, you could even do freehand do painting, yes. And what's your website? It's upholsterystudio.com. Okay, and I know looking through the, the brochures and things you sent me, I, I just couldn't believe all the different patterns and, and sizes and shapes that are available to us. And I love the fact it comes in a kit and I don't have to go anywhere yeah. else. <laughs> Thank you nice very much, convenient. Rebecca. Thank you, Cheryl. I hope you enjoyed the show today. Next time on Creative Living, we'll learn how to make some vintage paper crafts, dry tomatoes in the oven, and show how to tint fabric by using crayons. One of my next guests is going to demonstrate making some vintage paper crafts, including paper wheels, pom-pom wreaths, subway art, and much more. Another guest is a cookbook author and dietitian, and she'll show several ways to preserve tomatoes to prolong their taste and good nutrition. Tomatoes are an important part of a healthy diet, whether it's a paleo diet, Mediterranean diet, or some of the others. 
And we'll also talk to a crafter who's going to demonstrate fabric tinting with crayons, which is a great technique that even younger children will enjoy as much as the older ones will. All of these topics will be featured on the next Creative Living Show. If you ever have comments or suggestions or ideas for shows, you can email me at cheryl.borden at enmu.edu. I'd also like to ask you to become a fan of Creative Living on Facebook. Just go to facebook.com and in the search window type in Creative Living with Cheryl Borden. Thanks so much. I hope you'll plan to join me next time for Creative Living. We are very pleased to offer a new booklet that accompanies this series of Creative Living. This booklet is titled the 6600 Series, and it features a wonderful collection of ideas and information, and it's available free of charge on our website. Posted as a PDF file, you can simply download the entire booklet or just the segments you're most interested in. As with all of the Creative Living booklets, you'll find information on foods and nutrition, clothing and fashion, health and beauty, home decorating, and much more. For your copy of this booklet, go to our website at kenw.org and then click on Creative Living. Scroll down to the booklet section and you can click on this booklet or any of the other booklets we have available online. Once again, just go to kenw.org, click on Creative Living and download the booklet titled the 6600 series. We also want to encourage you to sign up for our free e-newsletter. Just click on the sign up now button and input your email address. That's all there is to it. You'll enjoy reading an up-to-date newsletter filled with interesting topics and information. Thank you.